know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. What's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Harry, I don't know if you know this, but this is a special show. Now, I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. What's going on? You ready to rock and roll, Harry? You know damn well I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, we've been to... trying to get this dude on. All right, like, Dre, you good? Nigga, these kettle chips are amazing. Yo, all right, Dre. Hey, I saw you munching on something. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, let me introduce my guest, my man, actor, movie star, uh, fucking good friend, funny as fuck. Uh, give it up for TJ Miller, y'all. Give it up for TJ Miller. What up, T? It's just me, the only one giving it up for myself. Right, well, now, we're we going to put the digital claps in <laughs> right <laughs> after. Mediocre actor, pretty good comedian, <laughs> and uh, yeah, generally uh, low-grade movie star, but most importantly... A guest on the Get Your Balls Back podcast. <laughs> yeah. Man School 202 in the building. I've been trying to get you on here for a while. I mean, we've been talking about this at least like two, three years now, trying to get you on. Yeah, and then, you know, the pandemic adds a year. Yeah, to yeah well, I, yeah, exactly. I forgot yeah. about the, I forgot about the pandemic little, already. <clears throat> we met doing a fun little show over on St. Mark's. And um, yeah, 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 we've been trying to get this done, but yeah. Uh, Man, it's good to hear from you. And I, I actually, on the way over here, I told Kate, as my wife, I told Kate, I go, you know, um, I sort of explain your whole thing. You yeah, know? yeah. And with the man school, and I explain, he's like a life coach, but not like a hippy dippy, yeah, spiritual, uh, you know, spirit animal guy. But he kind of breaks it down and tells men how to be men, but also successful in the relationships. Well, she it, loved that. What's funny is that, that. I, I I do with uh, I do counseling with women as well, right? And um, I had a young lady who I had a I, I, who well shall remain nameless, a uh, comic friend of ours, uh, and sh uh, she's gone through some kind of a, abusive situation with a dude. The guy was very emotionally abusive, and then he got this he cut her off and then she she kind of kept calling him even though they had a screwed up thing so it kind of signaled to him that she didn't feel like she had any value like she was more into him than she was and he just kept taking advantage of it and when I, I said to her was you know the, the analogy I use is like if you're like if you look at somebody like Harvey Weinstein who took advantage of all these women right whatever but I always say this what kind of boss do you think he was for dudes? He was an asshole on every level of that. You know what I mean? So there's a situation where where the, the just because there's not that sexual element, people who are abusive are going to be abusive anyway. You know, and there's no and, and I think people keep acting like they're that they don't know what's happening and so they don't have to be culpable for what they do. And I and I said to her, I said to her, you're with this guy who is abusive. He's been abusive to you. He's been abusive to his girl before you. He's been abusive to the girl after you. If you are still communicating with him, you're going, I'm OK with the abuse. Doesn't matter what you say up front. It just your action. Yeah, no, you're tacitly um, condoning the behavior. Right. And exactly. I, th I think what's so strange, too, and 
you know, this is what's so muddled about the Me Too of it all. And I actually had a conversation with Louis C.K. about this. Yeah. Because he had, and he's dealt with all this stuff in his special, but, um, you know, he, he kind of, if you look at the facts of the matter, he sort of asked permission to do this yeah. thing. And then years later, they come back and say, you know, this isn't okay. And, um, you know, this wasn't okay with me. Well, <clears throat> the thing that I've talked to people in Hollywood about when it comes to Weinstein, uh -huh. which, you know, there's just too much there. He's, he obviously, he was, there's actually a, the smallest museum in New York City. It's called the M Museum. Um, and um, it's just museum with an extra M on the front uh -huh. of the end. <laughs> museum. And, um, yeah, um, museum. Um, and um, it's great. It's great. And we know the people that run it. And uh, it's just it's the size of a freight elevator, but it's called object journalism. And um, <clears throat> excuse me. So what um, is so amazing about it? that? It's on. It's, it's in a place called uh, Cortland Alley. So it's signing, It's kind of near Chinatown. It's in that area of downtown. I'm gonna pull up. And they, that's great. And um, you check it online now. They're having like <coughs> appointments, and they have a copy of a letter that Bob Weinstein wrote Harvey Weinstein, and he right. talked about sort of this isn't okay, and you've been verbally abusive, you've been physically abusive to me, and. You know, your anger is kind of created. And so that's what it is, is you can allow a culture of abuse if you sort of, you know, even just by ignoring or not confronting someone's abuse. Yeah, you're saying to them, hey, that's OK. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, what comes out of your mouth, you got to always go by what somebody's actions. The thing it gets me is this lack of culpability. It's there's. I absolutely, you know, I'm, I'm not somebody that says that I don't understand the toxicity of what was going on. I'm a black man in America. So if anybody understands people having a particular culture and perpetuating that culture, that's what it is. But you still can't go. You can't go. Um, I am an adult and I wanted to be I want to be treated like an equal and then have no culpability because you didn't open your mouth and say I don't like this or this is not OK or whatever, where and there, there has to be some kind of onus on that. I think that's absolutely right. Hold on one second. Um, so what I was going to say, and I can say this here and Kate, um, you know, she's somebody that uh, gets really upset because she truly is a feminist. She gets really upset with these women that are kind of, um, you know, pretending to be feminists. And, yeah. Um, they're really not. And she's like, you know, feminism is not about down with the patriarchy. It's about how do we achieve equality? Right. And exactly. We, and equality is not, I'm exactly equal to you. I should have all the opportunities you have. I should get exactly what you get. That's not the case. It's, what are my strengths and how can I be treated equally as someone who can bring those strengths? What are your strengths? What right. are my weaknesses? <clears throat> you know, that idea of the, you know, in, in any successful relationship, you need femininity and you also need masculinity, but the equality exists by allowing both of those people to be mutually respected for their strengths and weaknesses. And thus you bring it together. As far as the wine scene thing goes, and it's good kind of that, um, you know, this is a safe space to talk yeah. about this. Yeah. But along the lines of what you're saying, you know, these women come to my um, my hotel room, you know, and him sort of they am saying he's forcing himself on me. Right. Um, to give me oral sex, which is a strange thing to kind of force on to somebody is giving right. them oral yeah. sex. And Louis said something interesting, which was. You know, he said, I don't, I don't I don't know about any of this stuff. There's no deposition. There's no tapes. None of this has been examined in the court of law. So he's like, nobody knows what happens there. And I think in Hollywood, a lot of people kind of quietly are saying, you know, these women, you know, there's a lot of things that women will do in the business to get that part. And Harvey Weinstein is not just a guy who can put you in an X-Men franchise. Right. 
he can get you an Oscar. And so a lot of people would, would pursue that. And would right, right. There, there, I there. think there's a I, and that's something that I say all the time. There's a no spectrum. Idea. There yeah. are, there's definitely some girl who came off a farm from Oklahoma and has no idea what those what those cues are. Then there's somebody who understands the cues, but she's kind of willing to go far enough to uh, almost like she's making the deal. There's somebody who is absolutely frozen in time and, and just afraid and paralyzed. And then there's the chick who's going, I'm making the deal. I, yeah. this, and then and then after the deal, you want to go. I, I didn't make the deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, like this was fucked up. Well, I was I was friends, um, pretty good friends with uh, a porn star, an adult entertainment actress um, named Jules Ventura. And okay. I kind of met her through a a podcast. We did a podcast called The Morning After, which was a comedian, a porn star. It's a really good idea for podcasts, actually. But they kind of, um, yeah, they were just young and didn't know how to perpetuate the, you know, the, the content, and the quality. But she was really interesting. I never slept with her or anything like that. I just became friends with her. And I was fascinated with the business. Mm -hmm. And one thing I noticed about her was that she was really a boss. Now she directs right, and, right. this pornography. Well, they're all doing that. They all have to do that now because of social media and stuff. You you know, if you're doing we we had Sarah, Sarah J, right, Harry? Yeah, we had uh, adult it's, film star Sarah J just on a couple yeah, weeks ago. And 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 She's what's happening everything. is because it's just like how we have to do as comics now, where yeah. you have to do your social media, you have to do videos, you got to do sketches, you got to do this, you got to promote yourself, you got to, you know what I'm saying? So we become a whole business where you come from. And I, how long you been doing comedy, T? Uh, I think I calculated that it was like, you know, I had breaks just for Hollywood, but I kept doing stand up. Yeah, yeah. But well, when did um, you start? When you know, you since since 03. So 18 oh, years, almost 19 years. Right, so I got 20 years. And that was a, at that time we are, we were like, le, you just let's be funny. I'm just going to get as funny as I can so I can be seen. You know, and you now didn't it's be, you didn't have to be a marketing department. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of that a business card, whatever. Try yeah. to build a mailing list. Yeah, but now yeah. you got to be multi-platform content and the creator. Same thing, but she same thing is true with the porn stars now. All of them are doing their directing and well, and the OnlyFans, and it's interesting. Jules has done something in OnlyFans now where she sort of called the fans, pared down the people that really, really are love her for her porn, but also love her personality online. Uh -huh. And now she kind of doesn't really do she'll do sexy pictures. But she doesn't really do porn anymore. And she just has this relationship with these right. fans who, you know, used to jack off watching her porn. Yeah. But yeah. now will absolutely pay 60 months, 60 bucks a month, 120 bucks a month to mm -hmm. be able to chat with her and interact. Right, with right, her right. And, well, you know, you, you sing, know, take some pictures in the lingerie I sent you. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's what's interesting is something that just came in my mind even the arc of that it's like like i always say uh true wisdom is the understanding of underlying concepts how they relate to situations that seem irrelevant but really are not and understanding on a root level what's happening on a cosmic universal level you can retake that lesson and reapply it in situations that you would never think so it's funny you said that because a relationship becomes that uh, and initially it's like, oh, we fuck, we fuck, we fuck. And then e e marriage has the same thing where it becomes more about how interesting this is. It, it becomes a relationship. You know, Jim David. Yeah, the comic. Yeah. yeah. So Jim David always I always laugh because, you know, he's he's a openly gay man has been openly gay f since, since he from the beginning. It's so funny. He has that joke about. um you know, even in kindergarten, because he's sort of very flamboyant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even in kindergarten, I, I was sitting there with a martini looking around going, who are these children? <laughs> <laughs> so he's he, not, yeah, he's hilarious. But dude. he's, you know, he's an older guy. And he used to say he was like, look, I, I've been with my partner 20 years. He goes, we're not running around in a in a sex swing with angel wings on and and, and a boa. He goes with like he he was like almost like my my mate is my dude. Like it's my boy. You know yeah. what I mean? So um, 
But it, it's interesting you say that too because um, yeah, one of my friends, he's a family member actually, but I had dinner with him last night and he's gay and his partner is, um, they just don't really have sex. They sort of had a business together, they sold it, they became very wealthy, they share a house in Long Island, but they each have separate um, uh, apartments in the city and he kind of is saying, um, you know, he dates young boys. I, I date young boys, but we're just like you said. It's like they're just partners. They're great yeah. friends. Yeah. And Kate and I met in college, so I always tell people that quarantine was kind of like we were just homies. Like we're homies from college, so it's yeah, like yeah. back yeah, in yeah. college where you know we couldn't get into bars, right? So we had to drink at home, and most of what we did is drink and watch movies mm-hmm. and like cook cheap meals together. Right, so right. It was a real throwback, and you know now we've been married five or six years or something. Yeah, we've known each other for almost twenty years. Wow, wow. And, um, and so you know it's a. Um, so she knew you when you first started doing comedy. Yeah, I would say even before, like when I was in the comedy group in college. Uh-huh. So I hadn't started doing stand up or anything. Then she moved to New York after college. We were still dating, and I moved to Chicago. But she would come to Chicago a lot. I came to New York a couple of times, but she's seen me bomb open yeah. mics, yeah. You know, improv shows where there's four people in the audience. Yeah. So that's I'm really lucky. Well, you know, what's what's interesting is that I know I know I don't really want to get into it, but I know you went through a whole Me Too thing. And what's interesting is the fact that I, I wanted to point this out is like as long as I've known you, you've been an authentic dude. Like it, I've never. First of all, you know how anytime I see you, there's a, we always have a really good. There's always a good feeling when I see you. Like yeah, um, good chemistry, it's good yeah, energy, good energy. Yeah, and um, and you've always been a very authentic dude. And I think the same thing, the way you approach comedy, and whenever you, I always f- find it. Um, more tr- like I'm always close, get close with PL- people who are being true on stage because there's an authenticity in that. But what's interesting is people don't understand that that authenticity, it, it flows through your pores. It, it comes out of your sweat because you're only being you and you only know how to be you. So then when you get these certain accusations or whatever, your chicken go, nah, come on, that. You like it, it, we know who you are because it's it's yeah. always the just it's always the steady flow. Well, it's really look, it's really lucky that I knew Kate before the fame, you yeah. know, for a number of reasons. But it also this is, um, you know, our particular situation. There's a reason it's just one woman who is because she's mentally unstable, which yeah. makes it difficult because you can't really hate her. Right. Um, you can't go. This is an evil person or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she was real unstable and we we knew her from college. Oh, okay. She wow. Lied, she lied about Kate and made up all the stuff about Kate. And in her mind, she sort of thinks that Kate stole her life, that she was supposed to be married yeah. to me. Really? Wow. She was to be a famous comedian and married to a famous comedian. And it's just this kind of delusional. She was on and off medication. I had to kick her out of our comedy group because she was so unstable. And the real problem with that time was, and Kate and I both felt it was a great movement, but it allowed certain women to just say whatever they wanted. Right. And there really was no response. And you got all these guys that are denying it and who knows what they're involved. So if you just said, this isn't true, everybody go, well, that's what everybody's saying. Right, 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 right. right. And right. there was no way to come back out and say like, Hey, I have emails from her where she wanted me to do her stand up comedy show. Right. She wanted me, she wanted to get together and apologize for what had happened in college when she attacked me and made these allegations in college. Right. right, right. I, I couldn't do that because what she would have done is spun it into, well, I didn't know. And I was, I was just trying to repair this, but right. And I, just, and I, or, or, or here's what, what goes. I, I just couldn't bring myself to talk about it right. until now. And now you look <laughs> abusive because now you say, yo, you just, yo, you, you, all these things that you said I did, you can't, you dated me after we went yeah. to the movies. Well, we, but it, it's we really, saw, but it, we saw just uh, Mark for death. With Steven Seagal, like how? Uh, Dante, now you're getting specific, bro. That's Did real. You know, I like that's that. Also, that's how Harry I, look right now. I, I, I also like you. 
You said I had marked you for death, but then you wanted to see Mark for death. You wanted to see it. You were the one who chose the movie. No, but but, you know what I would have said was, how could she have wanted me to do her stand-up show? And her husband wanted me to do her stand-up show. Right, right. All these things she said I did were true, but she could immediately come back and go, "Well, I was afraid if I didn't invite you to do it, then I would my career would be hurt." So they just there was it was. It's always it's always. Throw the, throw, throw the witch into the uh, into the into the lake, and if she floats, she's a witch, and if she drowns, she's a person. You know, it just was that catch twenty two. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But it's all we could do was sort of hunker down and kind of. It really taught us to sort of understand that the media can be really dangerous and really vitriolic and 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 really not even mean spirited, like really like. Um, the words in, are indifferent them. about whatever Not what the consequences are. They can be uh, malicious. They can okay. be really, really malicious and uh, vindictive and reckless when they want to be. Depending yeah. Oh, on absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, it's almost like but it's almost like it's not really malicious. It's really more about just making a thing. It's it's so they're so indifferent about how what they say affects the situation. It's no, almost like yeah. I, I don't care. They, I mean, it's because the integrity in journalism has given way completely. I would say given way, even with the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, these great institutions of journalistic integrity, all of that is given way to clickbait. And yeah. with, with Washington Post, with the New York Times, part of their clickbait is who's our audience? Let's let's cater to that audience. Let's look at this point of view. Let's not. We're not going to get as many people reading an op-ed about right. how terrible Trump is. Um, or, you know, we'll get more people clicking that and our mm. advertisers will get more views. Right. Then if we write something about, you know what, in this instance, Trump really hit it out of the park. Mm. And so that sort of, that's what happened. It's journalistic integrity gave way to sort of ad clicks and clickbait. And so now it's it's baked into the media to kind of put the dollar over any sort of integrity. Mm. And that, that was sort of the most rude w- awakening version of understanding that, that we could have, but it also g- gave us the real understanding of who we could trust in our own life, who, who was a friend and kind of, you know, not stuck with us, but just said exactly what you said, which is we had people that, you know, know, know us a lot more than, you know, most anybody. And yeah. they kind of said, oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to uh, 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 split on you. Yeah. 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 And so it was, so it, it, it was a fucking nightmare for like a year yeah. and a half or two years. But, um, it, it definitely made us understand like we can get through anything and we need to take a different approach to interaction with the media, which kind of has gone to zero. You know, here's, um, here's a, an interesting too. like, uh, when that was going down, it, I, I, I just assume that you guys are so, you, you know, because I'm constantly sell, telling guys who have a problem, like guys who have a relationship situation or, oh, I want to get this girl. I don't know how to get this girl. And yeah, I can tell you, I can teach technique to do that. But the ultimate thing is, I always say this real game is no game. If you're if you're if you yes. if there's an honesty in what you're saying, then that rings as safe and safe. A first thing a woman wants to feel is safe. But th- if there's deception then deception becomes dangerous, dangerous becomes, yo, I- I'm out of here. Th- that feeling that women feel that creepiness is 200,000 years of of um of of evolution that they get to to the point where they're hyper sensitive because it could mean their life or it could be a sexual assault. What's interesting is guys, we know that. And then we don't even know how to talk in a way that that doesn't trigger that. So if you're honest, then you don't need a like like a guy. I'll get a guy and he'll say, um, I met this girl. I really like you. How long? How many days should I wait before I call? I go. The fact that you are asking me that you're going to not be with this girl because you're already kind of you're trying to strategize. And the only reason why you have to strategize is if you're playing a game and if you're playing a game, somebody has to lose. But you're not even coming from an honest place. 
Fuck T. I don't- no, but I like I like um you know, like honesty is a policy. I also think more guys should ask questions. You can, there is a strange sort of confidence to asking a question. So instead of going, how long should I wait to call her? You know, what you don't realize is that vulnerability can it can equate to confidence. So you can say, sure, sure. Hey, hey, look, um, you know, look, I'm so into you. I want to call you like tonight. You yesterday. Know? But I also, <laughs> yeah, yesterday. That's the, you've got game. That's true. Yeah. Everybody knows that about Dante. But I, I want to call you yesterday. If I had a time machine, I would just go back so I could spend more time with you before I met you. Right. And, and, and then you say, but look, you know, I don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to leave the ball in your court. You call me when you want to, but know that I'm I'm excited to talk to you because I'm I'm really well. Really you know what? One and even then one you're better asking a question. You're saying yeah. wh- how how often do you want me to call? What is too much? That seems really really. Well, I, I think what has to happen. I think what I where I come from a lot of times is I I don't care about the time. I'm going to do what I want to do because what I want to do is true to me. And if you don't like the way I do things, we probably are not. We're probably not going to match up anyway. If you got if you think that because I call you the next day or I call you two days later or whatever it is, if you think that means something, then there's already this situation where you got to understand I, this is what I am. And, and as long as I am who I am and I know that and I'm aware of my flaws and so on, and I'm, I'm telling you who, the, who that is, I don't have to hide anything. So and, and the reality is we all make these situations where we're what I call is you're shoplifting the pussy. You're trying to get a chick and you don't have the money in we're your pocket. Shoplifting the pussy. That's the new <laughs> thing we're going to talk about in our household. <laughs> you got it. You it's because you, you you shoplifting. You know you don't got the money for what you for what you think this value is. So you're gonna try and finagle when you and I was when you go yeah, to the when try, you buy a bed, get, yeah, or try and get away with it for free. Saying hey, why don't you just come over to my place? I'll get a bottle of wine. It's like you got the money to take this girl out and spend I mean, the even, on her. But here's the thing: even if it is just a bottle of wine, and this is what you want to do. Even doing that is the truth in who you are. Like if yeah, you're like- I mean, not not just you're right, you're right. I said that incorrectly. Not just, you know, go and drop the dough if you've got it. It's also have it be the bottle of wine, but also leave, you know, uh, some post-its all over the house and in the back that just says one nice thing, one, <laughs> one compliment, one thing yeah. that you really like about her. And all of us should be searching for not a girl who you kind of get along well with or she thinks you're calling too much or you don't know if you're asking me, but you want to be, you want to spend the bulk of your time if you can find it. And you should be looking for a girl who wants to hang out with you as much as possible. Also. Right. Right. You know, right. And really if, and if she girl, doesn't want to hang out with you, then this is not a chick you should be with. Yeah, so what, what I'm saying, it next. never, as long as you're true to what, it, what you really think it, it, it there's a, there's a sexiness to that. And it's like, yo, I, I just, well, I don't really, I don't really talk on the I don't talk on the phone. I text. I'm like, well, then we can't talk because I'm not texting. Like, yeah, if, exactly. if, if, you, I, I'm just not doing that, because if you if this is how you want this kind of thing at a distance, I'm, I'm going to call you on the phone because I want to call you on the phone. And that's true. That's what makes me comfortable. And I'm not saying I won't make compromises, but I'm saying I'm true to what I am. And what's interesting is when you stop asking people what your value is and you tell them what your value is, who else knows you better than you do? I think that's absolutely right. And I think it's ask them questions about them. Yeah. Tell them your value. I think the hardest thing is you have somebody that you don't like jive with at all. Then it's kind of easy to walk away. Right. Right. You find some girl that's head over heels about you and same you to her. Yeah. Then that's easy to stick around. The tough thing to do is get in a relationship, see some red flags Say, you know, she's done some things that I really don't think I would do to a mm-hmm. person. Right, she's right. She's said some mean things. She's treated me a certain way. Of course, this can, you know, he's done this or he's done that. And the tough thing there is if you get along with them and you're having fun, but those red flags are there, I always kind of encourage people to say, you know, look, why don't, why don't you kind of let this go? Because the worst that can happen is you'll get back together. Right. Because, you know. It, it will work out. Um, and the best that can come of it is 
you go back to working on one of the most important things, which is meeting people, which is so hard to do nowadays, so especially during the pandemic. But, you know, it's better to leave something that's going to take time away from you meeting people um, that is like you're kind of settling. Yeah. You know, it's hard to get out of that because everybody's afraid of being alone, but it's so much better to do that. That's the other thing I always say. When it comes to guys who are like, ah, I wish I had a, a, a girlfriend or it's, I have a tough time meeting people, then I always say, well, you know what? Just focus on enjoying time alone. Go see movies alone. Go go be able to have a, a meal alone and, and, you know, sit and write. Well, or here's, just a, here's, something, a, here's, a, here's the thing, too. I, I, don't, I don't think people understand. It's like the, dyna- the social dynamics is a skill. Some people are good at it. Some people are not. Yeah. But just like stand up. Some people are funny. Some people you can get better. And the only way you do that is by doing it. You can't. Uh, you can, There's no there's no. So you have to talk to people. But if you're talking to people from a genuine place where as you're talking to somebody, because this is an opportunity f- to experience this person, this is an opportunity to experience these surroundings, which is what makes you a better person. Anyway, if, if you you know, if you ain't shit. So when the, when you laying on the bed and the, and the shadow from the ceiling fan is whipping across your face, you know if you ain't shit. And if you ain't shit, you got to do some work to 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 increase your value. If you can't dance, take a dance class. If you don't if you don't like your body, you got to work out. If you if you're not interested, you got to travel. If you're not smart, you got to read a book. But if you're working on you to be the best version of you, then you find yourself. You're, you're really not worried about what you're putting. You know what your product is. If I talk, if I if I was trying to talk to a girl and she's like, I'm, I'm not I'm not interested. I'm like, you yo, know, I it's almost like I got this bag of money. I got these bands in this paper bag. You don't even know. You don't even know what you're turning away. Well, first of all, she's turning away. And one of the values that you have is a guy that can do the ceiling fan shadow with across <laughs> your face metaphors. I mean, you don't find that in every guy. Okay. <laughs> Everybody don't do this. A lot of people. And, then, and, and I lot, understand. <laughs> a lot of people don't shop the shoplift the pussy. They don't shop the lift the pussy. That's exactly like. right. You've got to, <laughs> yeah. You've got to you turn a phrase. Like yeah. a fucking turn it on a dime. <laughs> it's um, it's what's, what I think is so interesting is that, uh, you know, as much as I like, I used to teach pickup too, and there's techniques and stuff like like you you like if you're talking to a girl at a bar, you talk over your shoulder. So, but if you think about the the um, if you think about the um, the 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 psychology of it, it's in front of me is my life. That's my life is moving forward. You are peripheral and I'm talking to you as if you're peripheral because you're not that important because my own vision for myself is forward. So it, it kind of works that way. And and very attractive women are so accustomed that because of their beauty, a guy will square up to her and bend over. And if she can't hear, he'll lean in. And if she talks, he le- and all of those things are ways in which you're saying them. You're saying, in essence, you're better than me. You're even my posture. I'm willing to break my posture when when you're really confident. And and, and this times when we had conversations, we you kind of have this posture where this is just happening. This is just us sharing thoughts. And it just because the woman is attractive doesn't make her better than you. In fact, most of the times it makes her worse because she's skating on that and not building a character or building a personality. But you, you find guys will say, OK, this is what's most this is what's most important, attractiveness. And then they'll sell themselves down the river trying to do it. You know? Yeah, I, 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 I hate to. So I, I remember after she reminds me of it, but I hate it. But Kate remembers that the first time I sort of made him move at a party, I was kind of teasing her about her necklace, which could be considered kind of nagging. Right. Um, but I really was sort of like, um, uh, you know, but it was I wasn't like that's a stupid, but I was sort of teasing her about it. 
Uh-huh. I think she enjoyed that because most guys would never do that. They're only going to compliment her. But it was a stupid necklace. It said right. beautiful or it was a butterfly. <laughs> I was also being honest. About right. that, and that's, know, and that's why it's funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, um, but, you know, I think early on we kind of, um, I think that's a great point that you just have to understand that women who are beautiful are, have been told that they're beautiful all the time. So you got to focus on what it is. I mean, you know, the physical posture, that's, that's brilliant. That's stuff I, I didn't even put my mind into. Cause I, you know, I'm shaped like a toddler who took a growth serum and I've got a horse. I leaned on the comedy uh, quite a bit, you know, since humor was sort of my ace in the hole, you laugh them into bed and you hope they don't fall out of bed because they're laughing too hard. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think absolutely, you know, the confidence and the, the wherewithal, but even more than that, the, uh, the, the intellectual acumen to say, it's not going to do me any good to say you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. Cause she's <laughs> heard that, you know, yeah, yeah. got to sort of focus on after you talk to him for a little while. So, you know, I really like how you, you laid that out. I like that term for, I like what you just said, you know, uh-huh. and to focus on their intelligence, of course, because everybody, girls are so sick, beautiful women, especially are so sick of hearing, how beautiful they are. They all they want to hear is somebody say, you know, you're actually really brilliant. Mm. Or I love your vocabulary. You've used a couple. I mean, of but if it, even but if what's interesting, as long as it's in truth, like the compliment should be in truth. So and if it's in truth, it, it rings truth and truth always feels safe. It always is a safe thing, even if it's something that you don't like. And and at any level of of getting a girl, the first is the is the uh, the flirting or the attraction. Second thing is the, is the safety. Right. And then the, then the seduction, it goes in those levels. What if you miss any one of those levels, you don't get you're not you, know, you don't end up sleeping with her if you don't check those boxes. And whether you understand that that's that's happening in every engagement. And so when you come from a place of truth, I you know, this is I, I, I said this to somebody like when you sweep in the when you sweep in the kitchen floor at the end of the at the end of the day there's always that line that's right at the dustpan right and there's certain dudes who go and get an envelope or magazine and they get it up and there's certain dudes that sweep it under the fucking refrigerator you got to be the guy who doesn't sweep the dust under the refrigerator all the time because that's where your confidence comes from. Because even these when you analogies, these, this is Dante's Dante's <laughs> strength. Is these, analogies. these goddamn dustpan pussy shoplifting analogies. <laughs> and I, and you, you, you but because it's it's really what you what you what are you doing when the agency is not watching? What kind of guy are you when nobody's looking? And and when you're confident about that. That is the most attractive thing anyway. I mean, um, it's just it's funny, like with Harry, Harry went from a situation where he was depressed and all kinds of to a place where he got, you know, you know, even just doing the show, us doing the show. Sure, yeah. And then there was yeah. this pivot where he was just like it just changed. And then chicks was falling out of the sky for him. It's yeah, it's following that level of honesty and and just approaching everything with honesty and not trying to it didn't. The irony is when you're cheating, it wasn't working when you're trying to like finagle. And like you said, shoplift the pussy more times than not. You don't know what you're doing. You don't get away with it. But just being honest just changed my whole perception. Just being honest with women and going "Eh," when I didn't like something and especially more in relationships than in the pickup game. You know, the pickup game is one thing. We talk a lot about that because that's what guys are obsessed with. But even when you are able to get into a relationship, the, the game is more prevalent to me in the confines of a relationship of going, uh, yeah, uh, let's oh, not yeah, do that. Is, is it, tell that story about the um, when, with the car when y'all were driving, you and your chick was driving in the car. Oh, OK. Just real so, quick, before you do that, I just want to touch on two things. One, yeah, go for it. Uh, when I when I shoplift either pussy or <laughs> from a retail store, from a Dwayne reader, right? Aid. I believe in that, that honesty. So on the way out, I say, you, I just stole your shit. I'm that's shocked. It, that's it. 
you got to be honest about that. And then, you know, I you don't know if you I don't think you shop. You have to shoplift it, but you might gift card a bitch, though. You yeah, gift I card. Might, <laughs> I like I, I'll, I'll I will put mine never on layaway. Gift card a bitch. And then you said, who are you when no one else is around? Are you confident when no one else is around? You got to have confidence in who you are when no one else is around. And I'm the kind of guy when I'm alone in a hotel room, I masturbate standing on the bed. Standing <laughs> yeah. up on the bed. And so, that's just who I am. That's that confidence. Harry, go ahead. Let's hear about this. Uh, thank you. Following, <laughs> following that, it's good to know. Um, I've never tried that, but now I want to try it because why not? Hey, why, why not, not try it? Hashtag why not? Got a soft sort of base beneath your feet. That's true. Get it done. Sometimes I'll put the comfort around me like a fucking superhero. Who knows? Like who James Brown? I'm confident in it. I'll get the magazine. I don't sweep whatever under the refrigerator. Like, yeah, you do all that. So, you know, this was uh, in a, you know, in a relationship in the past. I there was a girl. She's very sweet girl. Right. Very sweet. But every once in a while, she just had her moments where she would get frustrated with something like she was especially frustrated. If, let's say, you know, we were late for something or we anytime we had to be somewhere. She's very she wants to be on time, which I respect and appreciate. But she also gets a little nervous. Right. We're going to a show that I'm doing and uh, I wanted to go over my set. I wanted to do some stuff. So I had her driving. But she was just from the morning. She was a little bit like kind of antsy about it. We, you know, we had to get all this stuff done and all this. Stuff. And I can tell she's a little bit antsy. Right. She's giving me a little bit. Are you ready? I'm like, I'm dressed. I'm ready. I'm sitting. She was almost upset that I wasn't more nervous than I really am. Right. So it starts in the house. Yeah. We we get in the car and I can already see that she's kind of tense. Like you, you just feel it. You know, like something is off between you and whoever you're with, even if it's not some of your relationship with. And she starts driving like a maniac. Yeah, like she's, she's screaming yelling at out people, the fucking- screaming at people. This person's cutting her off. That person's cutting her off. And I go, hey, you know, re- relax. What's going on? She goes, oh, no, this person's cutting me. Off. I go, look, just just relax. <laughs> and then she keeps doing it again. Another person cut and cuts her off. She gets she starts yelling and scream this motherfucker. I go pull over, pull over. I'm, I'm taking over. She goes, what? I go pull, pull over. Let's get off. the. She goes, you want me to get off the highway? On the go, highway yeah. too. So he's like, go, are you yeah. on the highway? Get, I go, yeah, let's go take the next exit. Let's get off the highway. We're switching. Right. So the next exit is why she's quiet. And then she goes, uh, I mean, I'll just be quiet for the rest of the ride. I go, no, no, let's just pull over she, like, again. She's like, you want me to get off? The, I go pull over and I'm calm. I'm not yelling. I don't scream. I'm not a screamer. I go. The thing is, if you scream, then the argument becomes about you screaming. Absolutely. Not about what the point. So it's all a way to deflect. And also to something else. I wasn't angry at her. I my in my head, my whole thing was this. She this is not going to be relaxing for me. She's not relaxed. I go just pull over and I can see as we pull over. She goes, I just want to let you know that um, I feel like I'm being reprimanded like a child right now and I don't like it. And I go, fair <laughs> enough. I go, fair enough. Just to let you know wh- where I'm coming from. I go, I love you. This is, I'm not angry with you, but I got to do something to change this energy because it's not working for me. You're upset. You're pissed off. I certainly can't concentrate on what I'm doing. So it defeats the whole fucking purpose of you driving. It's like I, I always say I don't do awkward. Right. Like if this is this is not wor- I, I, yo, I can go home. I'm I'm not going to waste. And I don't go. You know, how you always go. Uh, I don't want to waste your time and I don't want you to waste my I don't even say because I don't give a fuck about your time. I'm not doing awkward. If you're going to make this awkward, we could just not do it and go ahead. But he good. And t- t- and so and so I go, look, just so you know, I'm not I'm not trying to reprimand you, but I had to make a decision. I go, just think of it this way. It's like I'm switching goalies mid game. I just got to do something to change this energy. <laughs> I love you. Like I tried to be as as nice as I could. I love you. I don't I'm not upset with you, but there's cl- you clearly dealing with something and I'm not going to do this for the whole ride. I just this is an hour ride and I'm not I'm not going to do this. I don't want to sit through this. And we sat in the car f- quiet for like an hour like and you know at least 30 minutes in I'm trying to like I hold her hand to let her know like I did everything to let her know like hey, it's going to be okay. And, you know, finally, we act like nothing happened. Eventually, you know, we change scenery. We get to the show. She's fine. I'm fine. It's great. And then like days later, I hear her bragging to her girl about how I took control. And like over the phone, she's just talking to her girl how like I took control of the situation. And she's just glad that I took control of the situation because she was frustrated and upset. But it was awkward as fuck. 
it was awkward as fuck. It's a tough situation. We sat there quietly and I had to go. You got to sit here quietly and yeah. not like because this is what the situation is. I had yeah, to but take I mean, I, I think a lot of times we don't understand that just because you when you feel if you feel awkward, they feel awkward, too. Absolutely. Like it, 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 it's a shitty situation for everybody. And, and sometimes <laughs> somebody doesn't have a have a, 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 a the ability to make that right to, just to get off the next exit. You got to have the strength to get off the next exit. Well, right. I, I, I love that you didn't uh, yell at her or go, you know, you didn't make it about how she was interrupting your Dante sort of saying it's also you didn't you weren't saying, look, I'm I'm in a headspace. You're fucking up my rhythm, my whatever. You didn't do that. You said, look, you're not feeling great. I'm not feeling great. Right. So let's change this. Let's change the situation. Right. right. The only thing I would add to it is, yeah. you know, and you, you may not be able to sort of track like clock this while it's happening. But I bet a lot of her nervous energy was she was nervous about the show. You you were nervous about the show. It's another show for you. That's an interesting part of her was like, if if, if we're not there on time, then that means that he won't get on to his set on time. In the back of her mind, you know what's what's crazy? She was nervous for you. She's that kind of chick that too. She's that's interesting, Harry, because in general, she's kind of that nurturing kind of. Oh, without a doubt, where she wants to make, you know, she would she would blow. She would cool his his soup before he puts it in his mouth. If 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 she could, you know, and she's very considerate and very sweet. And and I appreciate all that. But I and I knew something was up, but there was just something off a little bit. And I had to go like I'm checking on the time. I'm like, we got more than enough time. Like I tried all those windows. Definitely. For sure. I tried to go. Hey, we got enough time. Don't worry about that. I'm not nervous about the show. It wasn't that yeah. important a show. It was one yeah, of those. But that, that, yeah, that doesn't stop her from then when you say, hey, can you drive for her? That's OK. Now I have more responsibility for the show to go right. 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 You're driven. She probably gets nervous when you go on stage. You know, Abby, we don't did think you, about did that you, because we do so many sets. But yeah. A lot of times the girls are in the audience and they're wow. going, luckily Kate's seen enough of my sets. Yeah. That if I don't do well, she's like, either the audience was bad or she's like, you know, you kind of fucked that one up. That, oh, that <laughs> stuff was funny. And um, you know, it's, it's hard for us to put ourselves in that place. The thing that Kate and I do. That was really like, intuitive, that TJ. Awesome. TJ, that was really, really intuitive because yeah. that's something I never even I never even conceptually thought about that which is I'm always preaching this idea of empathy, but I think we like we're so removed from that fear. You know what I mean? We're comics. It, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not it's not the same. The experience of performing for us is not the same as somebody watching us perform. Right. Because right. We never watch ourselves perform. And yeah. even if you're watching a tape or something like that, you're not really like, oh, I hope I do well, because you already fucking did it. You know, yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Wow. And the thing that I always do is she says, look, I think I'm being reprimanded like a child. I don't like it. Always remember that right now, whenever there's conflict, you click from the frontal lobe back to the prefrontal cortex. You're back in reptilian mode, the fight or flight, all that stuff. And that's just neither of you are thinking. Even if you're handling it well, yeah. in your mind, you've gone back to the, I need to change. I'm going to fight this awkwardness by mm. changing the situation instead of receding into her going, I don't have to talk for the rest of the time. Then you'd be like, fine, then I won't talk either. And let's just right. not talk. You right, didn't do right. that. That was sort of the flight response. Right, so right. what Kate and I do, and what other girls, I hate girls, and I've had several of these girlfriends, I hate when they will say, don't walk out on me. We need to finish this fight. We need to finish this conversation. That's a whole abandonment, father. Yeah, right, 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 right. And what it is, is I, I, I'm able to say with Kate, you know what? Right now, we're not getting anywhere. So I'm going to take a walk, you know, or I'm going outside for a little bit. I'm going to go downstairs for a little bit and just relax. I didn't. And even if she's upset and she says, you know, we need to, it's, we've trained ourselves to step away from that. And Harry, you made a great point. Change of scenery. You know, sometimes you take whatever that energy is and you move it to a restaurant or a bar, you move it to taking a walk to the park, whatever. It'll change it up. And you need because you need if you just cool down for five minutes, 10 minutes, 
Well, you, you know, that's- know, and you just what you do is you focus not on staying mad or how did they wrong you, but let's get back to a place where we can go back and have a constructive conversation. Then maybe we can get to, you know, may, are you nervous about what I? Yeah, like, yeah. You, know, you said, hey, listen, this isn't working, and this is what I want to do, and we've got time. And what you said without saying it again, talking through actions. What you said without saying it is, the show is less important to me, and getting there on time is less important than us not. Feeling, I don't right. want you to feel like this. Right. But I don't. Even you know what like I was this. also That's thinking of, in my mind. I was thinking that Kate also is mature enough to, to understand that you need to reach to 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 put some space between you and not take it personal. Where in her mind she equates that, oh, you don't want to be around me because you don't love me no more. You know, you, I'm, I'm disgusting to you, and so. But I think right. when there's that real dialogue there when is when you're really talking you haven't you can't you can't interpret it as something else one people that's so important it's just everything that's happened to you makes you the person you are right now that is something that just people should be telling them that they should be telling themselves that over and over and over again and i'll say one more thing i'm now at two percent and i do have to go get a COVID test this has been so i could talk to you guys for fucking five hours um because you know each of you uh, especially Andre just has <laughs> brilliant ideas and metaphors and all that kind of stuff. And you've got Andre, you've really crunched on some things that I really would like to do. <laughs> crunch the numbers. Crunch, I want to crunch the numbers of how many kettle chips you ate, but I'll say two things real quick, which is as far as the pottery goes, you know, we need to, uh, you want to present yourself as somebody who has been broken and rebuilt. Yeah. You want yeah. to, if you have the vulnerability and you show that you've been vulnerable, made mistakes, been in bad relationships, but you, you're you better because of it, yeah. you, know, you built back better than before, that's yeah. like one of the most attractive things. Yeah. And what I'll say real quick, because uh, I am on 1%, I'll say this, okay? Mm-hmm. And that is, a lot of this is because of bread and agriculture, all right? And this is why I fucking hate bread, all right? <laughs> when we left the hunter-gatherer level of yeah. humanity... We started planning for crops and thinking about the seasons and worrying about the future. Are we going to have enough food to make it through the winter? And then we began to regret because we didn't save enough food from last crop. We should have planted more from last crop. We shouldn't have given away so much last year. Are we going to have enough to give away this year? So everything we have in our lives now about anxiety about the future and regret from the fast is bread. because of yeah. fucking bread. All it right. Is, yeah. so stop eating bread. As as my father in law says, it's the bread, man. It's the bread. Wow. <laughs> you know well, what's thank crazy? You, TJ. When you say even when you say that, that also was the begin of paternity. Like That's paternity. Right. Possession and 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 we have fa- because now my resources have to go to my family. And so I yeah. need to I need to know who my children are. And that's why there's no more orgies. Right. Right. And but also monogamy. You don't have to pay for all these bitches and have all these kids. You right. know, and you don't have to pay for other people's kids that's because, right. of, the, exactly. because of the paternity. And that was the whole thing. As soon as you put the, the pegs down and you start planting, that's when possession that's the, that went so it's what's interesting is how people look at mon- monogamy as this ethical thing when it really it was a, it was a social construct based on on the culture that we were living in P- we, tj i want to we got to get we, we we got to get back and we got to talk all about this stuff because that's yeah, yeah. i'm so yeah. interested in that yeah, yeah. Go, does not have a website.com you can see my dates i'm going to be in greensboro april 17th with the comic strip live I tour in all over. You can find the dates on TJ Miller's not have a website.com. Teenage Millionaire on Instagram, not TJ Miller on Twitter. And Dre, Harry, Dante, I love you guys. That's my thank ride. <laughs> yeah, that's my ride. All right, I got to go. That's TJ, my ride. Thank you, brother. I appreciate right, you. Fam. Thank you, guys. We'll talk again. Have me yeah, on yeah. again. I would love I, to. I'm going to come out to the strip when you do the strip, too. Let's do it. Yeah, come uh, to the set. All right, all right you cool. guys, let's get all some right. kettle chips. Get them on. <laughs> on yeah. You got them. Let's do it. Uh, um, wow. yeah, what, what should we do? Just plugs? You want to do plugs? Let's just do plugs, wrap this up. And no, then, no, uh, Harry, talk to me. Uh, you can go to my stuff. is all at Harry Turjanian, my YouTube page, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I'm looking for followers, motherfucker, so follow me. I got interesting shit going on there. It ain't like you're following good stuff. Follow me, goddammit. Dre? Yo, um, I had... 
this this the the sweet onion kettle chips. Oh Jesus them Christ! Shits is fire. Sweet onion. Asa- yeah, boy, them shits be hitting. I'm telling you. What is it, honey and? Uh... Man, I don't know. It's like this little. It's like a little sweet, and then it's like a little. Oh, what is that? And it's onion. Vidalia you know onions, saying? probably. It's delicious is what I'm. And then Word. it's the crunch. Kettle That's... kettle got a certain level of crunch. Nah, son, I can't fuck with the kettle. That's so key to. It. Sure. I mean, it's a it's kettle a bad is, thing because kettle, kettles kettle will damage the roof of your mouth. You fuck around, fuck up, and bite the wrong way. The kettle chip yeah, will cut the. That's if you rushing. I ain't rushing through it. That's I'm taking true. my time that's with true. the chips. Yes, you know what I'm saying? That is the key. Well, well, that is the key, Dante. You can check out Andre at the kettle chip at a bodega, <laughs> apparently. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> On the bodegos, ah, whatever. Yo, uh, y'all with me? Y'all can check me out. You know, DanteNimber.com. Click on uh, consult uh, one-on-one consultations. Follow me on Instagram, everything. Yo, uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Sexual Revolution, be a podcast. Yo, I'm done. Peace. Love y'all. Fuck shit, dude. Oh, fuck. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian, executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.